there and welcome back to our series welcoming you to the School of Law at the University of Limerick. We're now on our second video which is going to be a short discussion about what is a lecture, what is a tutorial and how do you as a student prepare for those classes. So we'll now begin talking about what is a lecture here in the School of Law at UL. Most of the content that you're required to know for the module is covered in the lectures with your lecturer who is, as I said in our last video, the module coordinator. Not everything though can be covered in depth in a two hour lecture per week. So you do need to do lots of your own independent reading. Again, we will cover this in our next video on legal research. The lecturer has to provide you with a course outline. This will happen in the first class of the semester. Sometimes you will get a paper copy of the course outline uh, and for environmental reasons now, most lecturers, instead of printing out the course outline, will put it up on Solace for you to access. On that course outline, you will be provided with the learning outcomes for that individual module, info on the assessment, topics that will be covered during the semester, and information on tutorial times, and a reading list to assist you in doing your own independent reading. So to talk a little bit more about lectures, again, as I said in a previous video, some lectures are in a two hour block and some are a single hour. Don't worry if you have a two hour lecture, you will get a break usually in between the first hour and the second. And also as well, each lecture uh, starts on the hour, but finishes at 10 to the hour. And that's to allow you time to get to your next lecture or your next tutorial. You will probably also be in a class with students from courses other than your own. And this is very positive because it will enrich the class discussion, but it also means there's more opportunities for you to meet your fellow UL uh, classmates. It can be a lot of people in one room at one time, and that can seem very daunting. However, remember that everyone else is in the same boat as yourself. So you will probably have the question, what do I do in a lecture? So these are just some tips or guidelines that might help you in preparing to go to your lectures. Many students open the PowerPoint presentation on their laptop, so what they will do is they will log into Solus. On Solus, they will go to LA4430, for example, the module which is taking place at that lecture time, and then they will go in and they will open the PowerPoint slides. Many students add their own notes to those slides during the lecture. However, I have to be clear and say, you don't have to bring a laptop to your lectures, but many students prefer to. Other students prefer to take handwritten notes. So they will bring along a copy book and a pen and they will jot down what they feel are important points from the lecture. And other students then sit and they listen to the material. Again, you can do a combination of all three. The other important thing to say is that if you are struggling for any reason with taking notes in class, then do please contact the Disability Support Services in the University. There are note takers dedicated to taking notes in classes and they will provide you with those notes. The other important thing is that if you worry that you have missed some of the content in a lecture or that you don't fully understand some content, all the PowerPoints used in a lecture will be on Solace. Again, if you want to print your notes and bring them to the lecture, of course you can do this, but you don't have to. And again, you can print them out in the library where you can top up on your print credit and then print out the notes and bring them to class. So now just to give you a few tips for lectures, this isn't an exhaustive list. This is just some ideas to help you uh, before you start uh, week one and attending lectures. The first thing I would say is come to class. It might seem daunting at the start. You might think, oh, there's lots of people, but you will meet your classmates. And often students, the person that they sat beside on the first day is their best friend in fourth year graduating. You will also hear lots about events, so events that the law school is running, but also the Student Law Society, the Students' Union, and other clubs and societies will also advertise in lectures. 
The other thing that's important about coming to class is that you will keep in touch with what is being covered. If you only rely on downloading PowerPoint slides at home, you won't be sure how long was spent on a topic or how important a topic was. Another thing that's important in the lecture is to listen. And we all tune in and out from time to time, but overall it's really good to try to listen during the lecture because the lecturer will often explain the law in a very relatable way. They will use real world examples, they will use things from the media, cases that are happening in the courts currently. Um, and again, if you don't come to class, you're only reading a PowerPoint slide. Another tip would be to ask questions. So again, the lecturer will welcome questions. Some lecturers prefer you to leave your questions until the end of class and will give a dedicated time for that. Other lecturers are very happy to answer questions during the class. The other thing to say as well is, you might be nervous and apprehensive about asking a question in front of a large group. If you are worried about doing that, then maybe call down to the lecturer at the front of the lecture theatre, either before the class starts or at the end of class, or email them your question. Another tip as well is reading. So do try to do some reading each week, as it will mean you are less stressed at coming towards the exam. Again, you don't have to read everything on the reading list in advance of coming to your lecture. However, do take, for example, a core textbook from the library, maybe have a look at a few journal articles, and again, it will help you to better understand the content in a particular lecture. Again, if you are feeling overwhelmed, which many people do starting out in law school, or that you feel you're lost in a module, do contact your lecturer or call up to them in class. They can recommend some text to help you or they will be very friendly and they will explain the material that you are finding difficult to you again. So a question you may have is what is a tutorial and what is their purpose? So tutorials are small groups of maybe 15 to 20 students. Again you will be assigned by student academic administration into your individual tutorial groups. Uh, they will usually take place in a classroom, whereas a lecture will usually happen in a large lecture theatre hall. Your tutor, again, will usually be a postgraduate student, so either a thought master's student or a PhD student here in the law school itself. Uh, the lecturer is responsible for setting the tutorial questions. And again, as I said before, you can access the questions on Solus on the class site before you go to the tutorial. Again, tutorials run in a two-week cycle, so you attend one hour during that two weeks. However, I have had the question before, can I attend a second time in the same cycle? Yes, of course you can, subject to there being a free seat in the room. The same material and questions are covered in each of the tutorial slots for the two weeks, so it is the same questions and same material that will be covered. Your tutorial time is written on your timetable, so you don't need to work out what time slot do I attend. It's also a comfortable space to ask questions, so it's very uh, collaborative, it's a very friendly place uh, to be because you're there with a, a small group of your classmates. Again, usually it's a few questions set by the lecturer for each tutorial and they're based on topics covered in the lectures. So you will have covered the content before uh, you get set these tutorial questions. Again, the tutor is there. They have a very important role to play. They help you to answer the questions. So you need to come prepared to participate with your classmates in answering the questions, but your tutor will support you if you're worried about whether you're answering the question correctly or not. Often as well, but not always, tutorial questions are sample exam style questions, so they will help you to prepare for the exam. Also, tutorials help you to become more confident because you will practice answering essay and problem style exam questions in that space with your classmates and with the help and guidance of your tutor. Another question you might have is, what will tutorial questions look like? A tutorial question will usually take the form of either an essay question or a problem question. In this video, we will focus mainly on essay style questions and we will look at problem style questions in our exam preparation video. 
For an essay style question, this is the style of question that you might see. The current processes for appointing, removing and disciplining judges are not fit for purpose. If anything, they damage the principle of judicial independence. And you're asked to discuss that statement. In your tutorial, and you will have the questions before you go into the tutorial, your tutor will help you to structure the information that you would have covered in the lecture, discuss relevant case law that you can incorporate into your answer, and to include readings from journal articles and textbooks. It's important to remember though, your tutor will not give you a pre-prepared answer. They are there to help you to work on the question along with your classmates. Case law is incredibly important for an essay style question and how to discuss the case will be covered in our next video. It's important as well in an essay question to analyse the law and you probably wonder, I'm a first year starting out, how do I analyse the law? But some useful questions to ask yourself when you're doing your own reading is, why is the law the way it is? Is it working well? Does it need to be reformed? or has there been reform of the law recently? In an essay question as well, there's usually no one right answer. So you're asked to discuss, criticize, or evaluate. It's important though that you, you have to back up your position with the law, whether that's legislation or case law, and also references to academic commentary from books or from journal articles. It's also crucial to remember don't reproduce your lecture slides in your essay. Your lecturer wants to see that you understand the law and not just the regurgitation of PowerPoint slides. Also, they want to see that you have shown evidence of understanding the case law yourself and undertaking your own reading. Three last comments to make about answering an essay question. Answer the question that's asked in the tutorial or in an exam, for example, not the one that you would like to be there. Plan your essay, have a structure, an introduction, a main body and a conclusion filled with the law and analysis. And really important, do not just describe the law. Even though it's an essay, you are being asked to be critical and to provide analysis. The other type of tutorial question that you will be asked to deal with is a problem question. Now this is something we will come back to in more detail when we are looking at exam preparation. In a problem question you will be given a set of facts. Similar to a real life situation, it will read like a story. And you will be asked to advise your fictitious clients, for example, Tom and Mary. You will have covered all the relevant law in your lectures. And in a problem question, the skill that you are developing is how you will apply the law to a real life situation. Your tutor again will support you in doing this and will work with you and your classmates to answer the problem question. Again, in advance of coming to the tutorial, you should have a look at the question, prepare some notes on what you think should be covered in the answer to that problem question. Then in the tutorial, the tutor will work through the issues that arise in the problem question and give you guidance on case law or external reading that might help you to answer the question. Your tutor will also work through the way to structure your answer to a problem question. In a problem question, you must use the ILAC method. And the ILAC method, which will be dealt with in video five in detail, is introduction or issues law, application, and conclusion. Thank you for watching part two of our five part series here at the School of Law at the University of Limerick, welcoming you to first year. Our next video will look at legal research. Bye.